What's up, movie lovers? I'm Mike, and this is Gotta Love Them Movies. <laughs> Oh, you guys, I'm so glad to have you back. It's, uh, the weekend was, uh, it was a long, it wasn't a long weekend, but, you know, it was, a uh, considering the events of, uh, this last, last weekend, it was a long weekend. Um, we have a lot of stuff to cover today. I am so glad, I am so thrilled to have each and every one of you, uh, live on Facebook. And if you are watching this on YouTube, it is not live on YouTube yet. But, thank you for joining us on YouTube, thanks for joining us on Facebook, uh, live... Uh, we have a lot of stuff to cover, and this is just, you know, an online group forum where we can all get together as I trip over my words constantly. Uh, if you've been watching the show at all with any amount of regularity, you'll notice I like to trip over my words. That's something I am extremely good at. Uh, so anyway, we've got, like I said, we've got a lot of stuff to cover. Um, don't want to lose any time, but first, before we start covering any of our movie news, uh, we need to learn a little bit about our guest host today. I am so excited to have him on the show. Uh, he is a movie aficionado. He is a, a movie geek and a nerd like me. Um, uh, he is a fellow improviser. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mr. Ryan Michael Hill. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for having me, Mike. Uh, yeah, uh, I love movies and stories. Um, uh, and uh, I met Mike uh, doing improv. We met in Alaska and uh, doing crazy, crazy improv at the Alaska um, uh, Improv Festival. And um, I would say that my primary geek area would be uh, Tolkien. That's my that's my thing. Uh, all that all that fantasy stuff. But I uh, but I probably we probably we'll get into that a little bit. But I'm also a big sci-fi fan, big comic book fan, all that. Um, so yeah, great to be here, Ryan. Thank you so much for joining us. Like you, you come to the show bringing your own brand of expertise. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, fandom. I think it's fair to say the fandom is enormous. Fandom is massive, and there are so many different corners, so many different aspects that uh, encapsulate fandom, and it's hard to put. A finger in every single spot of fandom. Uh, earlier before the show, you and I were talking. You said that uh, you, uh, I mean, just now you uh, were saying uh, about Tolkien and fantasy and stuff like that. But also you have a huge love for sci-fi. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, I was one of those people that um, was actually in the theater in uh, 1976 when uh, Star Wars came out um, with my dad and my family when I was like, oh, geez, uh, years old um uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh i was about i was about 10 uh no i was eight and uh the cool one of the cool things about that is recently i went to the most recent uh star wars you know of the main line of star wars films and um and my dad sat next to me in the same spot as we watched as we watched the the new star Whoa, wars so that was really cool, that cool. Um, yeah that's awesome it was super sweet uh, but i've i've been a fan of that kind of sci-fi um as well as you know I love uh, things like uh, 2001, uh, all that, um, uh, oh, what would you call it, all that atmospheric sort of uh, alienation sci-fi, you know, the sci-fi that makes you feel kind of bad. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not traditional sci-fi, uh, but it's, well, I'm sorry, it is traditional sci-fi, but it, the commentary that goes beneath it, it's, um, so I, you, you were talking specifically about 2001 A Space Odyssey. I uh, saw that movie uh, years ago on television like like i rented the movie or something i'm like hey i've never seen this so i'm gonna rent the movie uh i'm gonna sit down and watch it and i hated it i couldn't <laughs> i couldn't get past um uh like those scenes where hal is uh no sorry Hal is the uh, uh the ai uh what was the name of the main character dave, dave thank you uh dave gets to the space station everyone's like hey dave i haven't seen you since earth how's it going oh no that's that's somebody else oh who, uh, are, who I, cares it doesn't I have matter i'm trouble remembering his name oh, it but matter. yeah it, it i hated it it is a little until until <laughs> um uh, i think it was two years ago um imax was doing a special presentation of 2001 a space odyssey in imax and it was like okay i've tried watching this movie many times i hate it Let's just, you know, a friend of mine was like, Mike, we have to go see 2001 Space Odyssey. And I was like, okay, fine. So we got tickets for it. We're in Times Square. It was at the IMAX Theater in Times Square at the AMC, uh, 82nd, 42nd Street. And we sat down and watched it. It is 
it was a completely transformative experience. It was not something that you can experience in a television, uh, sitting in your living room. It's it's something you have to go to the theater and see. It was completely different. I loved it. It was it was an experience. Yeah, that's great to hear that you that you enjoyed it in that format. Um, I uh, I think the first time I saw it probably was on TV, um, and I recently rewatched it again with my wife. And something we had talked about earlier was finding things to watch that both you and your partner are really into, yeah. and uh, and that one really worked. Um, she really enjoyed it, and and I'll I'll admit right now that I'm when it comes to sci-fi, like I love the Marvel films. I love, but I'm a I'm a little I'm a little bit of a snob. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, like I, the 2001s, the uh, the Blade Runners, that you know that that lofty cinematic sci-fi. I'm really into that, and I uh, so and it's it's just that it gives me a um, uh, get, you know, it just gives me a feeling of like being there. You know, that's the thing about it. You know, it's just so just draws me in, and I uh, you know you know how it is with art. So I bet you are very <laughs> much looking forward to Dune. Um, I am. I really am. Um, I did like the, um, the, I can't remember who made it, but the, the old movie. Um, uh, and I did not ever watch the series. I think it was on sci-fi network. It wasn't David I Fincher, didn't ever watch that. Didn't David Finch no. do a version of it? I don't think so. There was one that it's somebody that we would all know. Um, but, uh, but I did like that one. Okay. Uh, but I'm also one of these people that like I, I do it with um, uh, with 2001. I do it with like I read all the books too. You know, um, I'm I'm a very much a a book and movie together guy, and I like to see how they translate it. And just you know, as a Tolkien guy, so maybe this will give people sort of an idea of where I stand. I did think that Peter Jackson's uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy was pretty darn good. Like he did a pretty darn good job of translating the oh, book fantastic. to the film. So, I, I yeah. just had to look up to, uh, uh, Dune, uh, the 1984. Dune. It was David Lynch. It wasn't David Fincher. It was David Lynch. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, it was like a David correct. something. Anyway, you guys aren't here to listen to us talk about <laughs> sci-fi and fantasy. And I mean, like we may talk about sci-fi and fantasy, but we need to get into those uh, topics later on. Uh, so uh, let's just go ahead and do the show order today, you guys. Uh, as always, I'm going to tell you how to subscribe to the YouTube channel on YouTube. Uh, I, I, I also happen to work for the Department of Redundancy Department. Um, uh, we're going to cover a lot of movie news today. Guys, there was a lot of stuff that happened. Uh, if you can see my t-shirt, you will notice that uh, there is it is uh, very specifically themed for what we're going to talk about today. Um, uh, we're going to try out a new segment, What We Watched over the weekend, uh, some new things uh, to try and test out and chit chat about. Then we're gonna just open up the "Gotta Love Them" movies mailbag and finish off the show by taking your live questions. So if you guys are watching this live, please jump down to the comment section below, join the discussion. If there's anything that you want to talk about, if there's anything that we're talking about, you want to comment on it, jump on down to the comment section below and let us know what is on your mind. All right, guys. Um, as previously mentioned, let's hop on over to the Gotta Love Them Movies YouTube page. It is super important that uh, you look us up on YouTube. Just type in Gotta Love Them Movies. Go over, you're going to see a little red box that says subscribe. Go ahead and click that button. What that does is clicking the red subscribe button will obviously grow my subscriber base. But Mike, we're watching you on Facebook Live. Yes, I know that. But... Once I get enough subscribers on YouTube, uh, and w once we get enough people watching content uh, on the YouTube channel, that qualifies me to start earning ad revenue. Hooray! Uh, but Mike, you're already doing this on YouTube. Why do you need to uh, make money about it? Well, let me tell you, um, I, I can make this my main job. Um, if, uh, if you guys just jump over to the, uh, gotta love the movies YouTube page, click subscribe, maybe like the video, maybe share the video, maybe leave a comment that will help to increase my subscriber base and I can make this my full time job. Um, and speaking of which, once we hit 1000 subscribers, we are going to move the show from Facebook to YouTube, make that a full time jump. Uh, more, there's more people on Facebook, uh, that I'm friends with that can watch this video. They can like share and subscribe. So that's why we're testing it out here. And then we're going to head on over to YouTube. Anyway, guys, uh, that does it. Um, you, you know, what's going on. We don't need to beat a dead horse, even though I love, uh, uh proverb, pro proverbially, Oh, man, I told you. Speaking is not my forte. Speaking of which, let's just jump into some movie news. How about that? What? 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 
Oh, you guys, it is it is now that time of the day we we are going to take some movie news. Um, if you haven't already heard, we're just going to kick it off with the biggest news over the weekend. Um, this is also the saddest news uh, that we've had coming out over the weekend. Uh, just in case if you haven't heard, um, which is pretty hard to do. Uh, one of our most beloved actors, uh, Chadwick Boseman, uh, best known for his role in Black Panther, has passed away. Um, this this is some of the most tragic news. Um, it it has touched every single one of us uh, in a way. I remember, um, uh, was it six was it six years ago that Robin Williams passed away? Um, I think that was uh, the only time that I really took a celebrity uh, death like super personal it was he was one of those icons he was one of those people that you he was always alive he was all not just alive he was uh he was always famous like super a-list status uh and he was just always there for my entire life from Mork and mindy um you know happy days Mork and mindy uh moving all the way through um i don't know why the world according to garp is jumping to mind but sure why not um, you know, Hook and everything else. But I'm not here to memorialize Robin Williams. I, I, I kind of went down that rabbit hole a little too much. Uh, we're here to talk about Chadwick Boseman and the impact and the legacy uh, that he's left us. Chadwick Boseman, uh, like I said, best known for his role as Black Panther in the Marvel uh, MCU films. Um, the work that he has done has been so... Not just important... I mean, yes, it has been important... It has been indelible. He has left impacts on people's lives. But it's that last part. It's him making a real change in people's lives uh, that I would love to touch on today. Um, this particular article uh, that we're looking at in Variety, um, they talk about like what the legacy of Chadwick Boseman. What is the legacy of Black Panther and why is it so important to people? Um, the type of work that Chadwick Boseman did, the type of films uh, that he was involved with. Uh, let's just jump over to his IMDb page really quick. Uh, I was looking at this earlier today. He, I mean, he has two movies. I'm sorry. Well, really one movie coming out uh, that he's already finished filming. It's called Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. It was based on a book uh, written by oh August Wilson. Uh, it was, uh, uh, or I guess a play uh, written by August Wilson. Um Chadwick Boseman was extremely well known for playing characters, uh, aside from Black Panther, uh, who were real life people. Um, Thurgood Marshall, James Brown, Vontae Mack, Jackie Robinson. When he played Jackie Robinson in the movie Forty Two, that was that was kind of a huge um, beacon. For him and for a lot of other people, uh, to, that's that story in the way that it was told um, with uh, Harrison Ford and Chadwick Boseman was never told on that level before. And the and the performance that Chadwick Boseman put out was incredible. And then he goes on to do Get On Up, playing James Brown. I particularly wasn't a fan of the film. I didn't like the storytelling. Uh, it, it, it had a weird, I know a lot of other people love the film Get On Up, but I loved, I loved Chadwick Boseman's portrayal of James Brown. He really made, he, what, one of the things that really makes me just salivate when it comes to acting or other people's acting is when I forget that it's the actor and I completely believe that it's the character. Um, uh, in Wolf of Wall Street, um, uh, this was done by, um, oh shoot, super bad. Ryan, help me out. Uh, what is the name of super bad? Um, oh boy, I can't help oh, you. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, he's in, uh, basically every Seth Rogen movie ever. Um, uh, uh, larger individual. Shut up. Oh, you guys Shut know up. who I'm talking about. It. Uh, uh <laughs> Evan Gold. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Jonah Hill. Thank you, Jonah Hill. Uh, I know, he's got my freaking last oh, name. Oh, man. It was, I know, right? Uh, it was right on the tip of my tongue. Uh, Jonah Hill did this in Wolf of Wall Street. I forgot that it was Jonah Hill playing this character, and I completely believed that it was someone else. And this is exactly what Chadwick Boseman did in, uh, in Get On Up. I totally, totally believed that it was um, 
uh, James Brown himself. Uh, Thurgood Marshall, same thing. He plays important, iconic uh, characters that have left their mark in society. And now he, as an actor, is not just doing an incredible job at portraying some of these characters, some of these actors, or um, uh, sorry, uh, real life people and bringing his own charisma, but he's giving us a reason as an actor to care about these characters, to learn about uh, social indifference, to, you know, go out and study and become part of the conversation and really make a change, make an impact. These, I mean, there's so much more to the legacy of Chadwick Boseman. Uh, Ryan, I'm going to throw it over to you. Um, what type of work has Chadwick Boseman done in your life that has left a lasting impact? Well, I got to be honest and say that the main thing that I know him from is Black Panther, but that's a significant impact. I it's mean, huge. on me and on other it's huge. Yeah, I mean, I think just from the, uh, uh, you know, not to get too political, but just from the perspective of representation, yeah. you know, of, of the, Black Panther, the comic in the early 70s was so critical uh, for African American, you know, characters in comic books and then um him and falcon right and yeah. then uh, and luke cage as well for, right yeah i forgot about luke i thought he might have been 80s but anyway not important uh <laughs> so he uh, and just when they made the film in the mcu it was so you know and and boy they did not go halfway with the representation and they did not go halfway with making it you know a film about a black superhero and um and it was and it was awesome. I mean, it made, you know, it made this white boy feel good. I mean, it was like, this is great. I'm so thrilled with what they're doing here. So, um, uh, there's guy, I often like to, it's, it, you know, poor, uh, poor Bilbo. He was, you know, he was the only white dude in that film. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it was, uh, it it's was, true. that's, that to me is his, I mean, I know he's had other impacts and I especially like how you pointed out his, that he plays real people. He plays James Brown, he played Thurgood Marshall. He plays all these really great other characters, but man, you know, the impact he had through Black Panther is going to be, it's huge. It's yeah. huge. And he's such, he's such a great actor. What I read in an article, or I saw in one of the articles memorializing him lately, they said, it's hard to make dignity interesting, but he did it. Like, uh, and, he, and he really did. And that's, huh. and that's the perfect guy to play Black Panther, too. It's, like, it's you know. hard to make dignity interesting? Right. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. That was, I, I was trying to remember the, where I saw that. I'll look it yeah, up. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that I mean that's I've never uh heard it put that way before, but it's uh I mean you Ryan, you're an improviser, so you know just as, as well as I do. Uh one of the, the improv gods, uh improv gurus that we often refer to, we always point to Del Close. Um one of the things that Del Close always said in terms of improvisation on stage is I would rather have you uh be interesting than funny. And uh there's we're always shooting for funny. We're always shooting for dramatic. We're always shooting for action. We're always, there's always that thing that you are trying to aim for uh, that has um, uh, kind of tangible results. But when you're interesting, it's all encapsulating. It's you get to you get to make commentaries. You get to uh, uh, be funny. You get to be dramatic. Uh, there are so many levels to being interesting that when you are interesting, that's what gets people invested. That's what gets people, you know, ticks off the the spark of their brain, and they're just uh, like they they now have an entry point into the character, into the piece, um, into whatever it is that you are creating, so that they can um, themselves be impacted and make their own uh, form of change. And it's all those things that I think are just so important, and as you say, interesting and investing. Um, you know, going back to, uh, the career of Chadwick Boseman, he has, um, I, it's, it's, it's hard to put into words because the, the types of things that he has done have been so incredibly important and, uh, meaningful to other people. You know, earlier, uh, Ryan, you talked about, uh, being solely, familiar with his work on Black Panther and you know to his credit Black Panther is one of those characters that especially in the day and age which we live now like we thought Black Panther was impactful two years ago look at today 
Look at the social climate today, uh, the cultural climate that we have right now. Like, this is the kind of character, and it's not just the character of Black Panther. It's what he stands for. And, and, you know, it's not this comic book like, hey, superhero, hey. And while it's great to be inclusive and to have other um, uh, minorities and demographics represented um, and, you know, other uh, people of color and celebrated and to say, like, it's not like a superhero or a story or a lead or a main character doesn't need to look like this. Like, they can look and act and sound as different as anyone on the planet and they're all beautiful and we're all a part of this incredible cultural rainbow that we need to explore. That's why it's important to explore these types of things. Um, and I'm, I'm just, I'm gutted for his family first and foremost. Um, I'm gutted for the fans that a character like this has meant more to like, uh, look at uh, Linda Carter. When Linda Carter played Wonder Woman uh, in the 1970s uh, television show, it was the 70s, yeah? I believe it was the 70s. 70s or 80s uh, television show. The impact that she had, and I will even go so far as to say the 2016 uh, Ghostbusters reboot. Um, Leslie Jones, um, to have someone like Leslie, I mean, it wasn't a great movie. Like we can debate the merits of blah, 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 the movie or whatever, but what it meant to have uh, a woman of color play an iconic character that we've all known for, you know, at least a generation, the impact that that had to people of her own demographic was incredible. It was, I remember watching an interview with Leslie Jones on the view um, with her and uh, uh, Whoopi Goldberg mm -hmm. and Whoopi Goldberg is just fawning over Leslie Jones and Leslie Jones had to stop her and cut her off and say okay yeah maybe but also I'm here because of the work you Whoopi mm -hmm. did right I would not be where I am right. word for you you were the person I was able to look up to and be inspired and encouraged. And that is exactly what Chadwick Boseman has done with Black Panther. It's, right. I cannot underscore this any more of the significance and the importance of of his performance. It, yeah, it's huge. It's huge. Um, it, yeah. He, I mean, the, the degree to which Black Panther uh, sort of changed the whole... Um, uh, it just brought... It brought it made the it made the MCU like um, so socially relevant. <laughs> like, it was just it like did. whoa, wow. yeah. It was it like did. this is incredible. So uh, it was really it was really cool. And I know that there's a lot of um, that there's a lot of black kids out there that that's going to mean a shitload to. Oh, I'm sorry. That's what <laughs> like, God, that was my first one, Mark. Oh, my, that was my first one. <laughs> and you only get one. You only get one, Ryan. You only get one. Well, it's not bad. I'm much. I'm really glad it was the S word and not the F word. <laughs> <laughs> what? What do you mean? I don't know what. The, what I don't know oh, what that I, is. No clue. Either. Family, friends. <laughs> friends. Well, I will say so. For uh, for Chadwick's um, when you were talking about his uh, his performance style, that whole thing about dignity, um, making and being interesting. He doesn't, as an actor and a performer, he doesn't overshadow the character. That's the thing. Like I think you know, being an improv, you and I are used to seeing people. Almost jokingly overshadow the character, you oh, know, just course. as a, you know, just for fun. That's what or you have for, to do when you're on stage. Sure, it's, yeah. it's fun, right? But but um, he he's a very high quality actor. He never does that. He doesn't. You don't see Chadwick Boseman. You see the character, and not all film actors you can say that about. No. You know, some film actors are really more be stars, and you you see the actor in your face. Um, and with Chadwick, you do not see the character. You know, so he's just he's, he was just such a. I think another aspect of this that I've been thinking about a lot. I heard an article with um, Letitia Wright, who plays Shuri in the in the Black Panther films, mm -hmm. um, and she uh, she was in tears when she was given this article. Excuse me, when she was given this interview, and um, uh, she pointed out that the fact that he didn't say anything about his diagnosis or his treatment, and that he just wanted to keep working, you know. Yeah. And just until until he couldn't work anymore, yeah. um, and that's just huge. I mean, he's just like I'm. 
you know, he's like, yeah, I may not make it through this, but I just want to keep working. And I'm, so I'm going to keep it secret so I can just keep working. I'll only tell the people that are closest to me, like family. And then because um, Letitia, she didn't know, you know, she worked with him on films. And so, um, you know, over so this weekend, I've been doing a lot of uh, wondering if uh, if even Kevin Feige knew. Like yeah. I, I would, th I would like to think that Kevin Feige knew, uh, because you know all the plans and, and you know everything else going on, um, but it's it's quite possible that you know even because this came as such a shock to literally everyone. Oh, yeah, Nobody me. saw this coming. He's only forty three. He I mean, 43. when I when I heard his name the first time on the uh, you know I was like, what are, what what are they talking about? What what's this about? And then I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like how old is he? Yeah, he's. Like, younger me he's a decade younger than me i mean it's like dude i thought it was a joke <laughs> when i yeah. heard, my cousin was the first one who texted me uh and tiffany if you happen to be watching right now uh thank you for being the first person to bring this to my attention um she texted me it was the it was the the like that black announcement card that uh, his family posted on instagram and i read it and i was like oh this is one of those like people are just trying to get a rise out of everyone uh it's not real it's a fake post and at the same time, at the same exact time on uh, on my uh, cosplay group chat uh, that I, you know, with all my cosplay friends, uh, they started talking about it. And I was like, whoa, 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 hang, wait, what? And then I saw the article in Variety. I saw the article in Deadline. It was all over the Internet. And it was and uh, my girlfriend and I, we were in the middle of watching Doom Patrol at the time. And like everything came to a grinding halt. What is happening right now? It was, I mean, guys, we can we can keep hashing this out. We can keep going around in circles and talking about how incredible of an actor he was, how much change he promoted, and, and you know how much he used. We haven't even talked about how much Chadwick Boseman used his celebrity for good. He was kind of a real life superhero in that regard. He, uh, you know what? I didn't even stop to think about it. Um, uh, uh, 2000, oh, what was this? 2018, uh, Comic-Con exclusive Black Panther, um, the, uh, the wrist bracelets. I was going to put this on for the show, uh, as my way of Wakanda-ing forever. Um, so yeah, I mean, like we can, we can keep going around and just talking about how incredible, how gracious, how... Uh, brilliant of an actor he was and, and how special of a human being he was and all these things are to his testament but guys I want to hear from you what are your thoughts uh, about the passing of Chadwick Boseman of course it's incredibly tragic it's sad um, it's it's terrible news yeah for the MCU but on a grander scale on a personal level because he meant so much to so many people uh, jump down to the comment section below and let us know what Chadwick Boseman meant to you as a viewer, um, as a human being, and the kind of change that he instilled in your life. All right, guys, uh, we're going to move on to our next news topic of the day. And uh, this news topic comes to us also from Variety. Um, this is... Uh Tenants and New Mutants. Apparently, uh, some of these screenings, people have been sneaking in cameras and uh, they are leaking pirated copies of the movie onto, uh, you know, YouTube, social media, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm I'm never a fan of whenever I hear stuff like this. Pirated films. I, I'm an artist. As an artist, I would like to get paid for my work. Um, ergo, I am willing, if I want to watch a movie... I'm willing to pay for it. Um, I I don't want to torrent something, even if it's great quality. I don't want to take that money or like whatever the residuals are. I don't want to take that out of someone else's pocket. I don't want to be a contributor to a system that could potentially make us all lose the things that we have. Right? You know the the whole classic phrase, the the classic idea of you guys. This is why we can't have nice things. Well, you guys, this is why we can't have nice things because people in the world are jerks they will pirate this stuff though they uh people love posting spoilers um i a, a very good friend of mine chris out in san diego um it was the night of oh what was this movie uh it was the night of force awakens star wars the force awakens we had been waiting for this movie it had been promoted like this Star Wars The Force Awakens was one of the most highly anticipated movies of all time. I think it's fair to say 
that it was one of the most anticipated films of all time. He had his Star Wars t-shirt on. He took a photo. He posted it on Instagram. Uh, He and his girlfriend left the house to get in the car to drive to the movie theater. And someone in England somehow happened to see his post and posted the spoilers about what happened with Han Solo, completely ruining the moment for him. People who post spoilers, um, people who record films and television shows, put them out illegally as a torrent or as, you know, on Pirate Bay or whatever, um, are, in my opinion, some of the scum of the earth. Uh, Ryan, you may have a very different take on this. Uh, what is your opinion on pirating movies and putting them, putting them up on the interwebs? I don't know that I'd go to scum of the earth. I would say that it is not good. <laughs> it is not nice. Uh, I think uh, I think pirating is more serious than spoilers. Um, spoilers are rude, uh, and and if somebody like you, you know, uh, you'd want to be just careful about that. Sure. Careful not to spoil somebody's movie watching experience. And you know? sometimes we do it. We don't realize that we're doing it. Sure, I've done it. I've done it. Yeah. And I also think that maybe there should be like a um, uh, what would you call it? A statute of limitations, yeah. like mm-hmm. ten. 10 years, <laughs> maybe less. <laughs> depending, on, <laughs> depending on what corners of the internet. Some people are saying two weeks, and I'm like, well, that's, that's a little quick. Yeah, that's, that's a, little, a quick. little tight. You know, uh, you know, uh, Darth Vader is Luke's father. We're going to give it away. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ryan! Exactly. I know. So anyway, it's a, it was a, boy, that was a huge deal when I was uh, 12 years old and saw Empire Strikes Back. Holy moly. Uh, I'm glad I didn't know that. So yeah, spoilers are rude. Um, uh, pirating is a crime, um, I, and I think it should be. Uh, it's people's intellectual property. I, I'm gonna give a slight. I'm gonna give a slight caveat, very slight, that you can't stream these films, and you do have to leave your house and go to a movie theater, and possibly, in, in a pandemic, possibly take a little bit of a risk. So, uh, but no, but no, still no. There, but, there, but, you there know, most definitely is yeah. a gray area in 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 sure. what we're living in right now. But I I would also like to argue uh, the point of like, yes, it sucks. Um, the, it's it sucks that people in uh, middle uh, the Midwest uh, United States. It sucks that people around the world are able to see Tenant and New Mutants before I can. I live in New York City. Theaters are not open yet. Uh, people who right. live in California, theaters are not open yet. Other parts of the of the world, other parts of the United States, theaters are not open yet. Uh, so it's I don't want to say it's unfair because I get it. Like the studio has to do studios and the exhibitors have to do what they have to do. I get it. It just sucks. Um, mm-hmm. It does. Um, but I'm again like I I feel myself fortunate where um, I am among the few people that was able to see uh, the first Avengers movie in theaters uh, having an all-day marathon. 9 o'clock a.m. we went to go see uh, uh, Iron Man right afterwards. Uh, Incredible Hulk right afterwards. Iron Man 2 right afterwards. Thor right afterwards. Captain America the first Avenger which all led up to the midnight release showing of Avengers. Uh, back in 2012 and it was uh, I hate using the term transformative experience (laughs) it was great you really enjoyed it it was fantastic (laughs) so like I consider myself to be in like the extremely fortunate crowd I was able to see Harry Potter 8 opening night I was able to see uh, Avengers Endgame uh, in in the Dolby cinema down in Orlando with all of my friends Uh, there were I've had incredible experiences over the world. And if that means that I have to wait a few extra months uh, for a safe viewing experience of, of, you know, one of these films, I'm, I'm kind of okay with that. And maybe it's unfair of me to expect the same thing from other people, but I don't know. That's just kind of how I feel. Do you, do you have a different take on it? No, I think that's pretty on the money. I, I think it's interesting that we were talking about spoilers and uh, then we were talking about um, uh, pirating and streaming and the pandemic and all this stuff came up. And I think during the pandemic, you you actually need to be more careful about spoilers because of what you just talked about. Because um, uh, 
you don't know when people are going to be able to see it. Like, I didn't even realize that because you're in NYC, there aren't any theaters open yet. You know, like I didn't. Yeah. It, it makes sense because you guys had the early big spike, you know, and you, we were more locked down. And so I, I, there are some theaters open in Austin now, I, I think. I'm not going. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, you know, we have we have pl- I have plenty of stuff I can stream at home. So, uh, sure, yeah. but yeah, so I subscribe to like just about every streaming service and that's where i do most of my watching so anyway guys uh what do you think do you think uh it's you know living in a pandemic world um that you know as ryan kind of touched on earlier do we kind of give some of these things a pass uh for letting piracy uh happen uh specifically with new mutants and tenant or uh do you side more with my hard line of saying nope no piracy whatsoever suck it up move on uh jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts all right, guys, uh, moving on to our third piece of news for the day. Uh, this is coming out of Vulture magazine. Uh, if you've not already seen uh, or heard about, the VMAs were last night, um, uh, the MTV VMAs, uh, Video Music Awards. And during the uh, one of the commercial breaks, the new trailer for Stephen King's The Stand uh, came out. This is a teaser trailer. It's not a full trailer. Uh, it's not even our first. It's not even our first trailer. It's just a teaser. Um, uh, had a few interesting uh, nuggets of information. First and foremost, I didn't realize that Whoopi Goldberg was in the movie. Or I guess it's a, a limited series event uh, happening. Um, Ryan, I know I'm going to pass this over to you before I ha- uh, enter any of my comments. You are more of a, a book reader. You've read more Stephen King. I feel like something like The Stand is more in your wheelhouse. Uh, what are your thoughts sure. about uh, the trailer? Are you excited for it? Or did you prefer the miniseries that happened uh, back in the 90s? Um, yeah. Where, where do you stand on this trailer? Um, so I have, I have mixed feelings about Stephen King, as we've discussed before. I think that he is a, he is a, he's a great writer for film. Um, he, and for his particular genre. Um, but as I told you before, I'm a snob. So <laughs> you know, he's, he, he's good for what he does. Um, I have read The Stand and I did enjoy it. Um, and it's probably the best thing I've read of Stephen King's, um, the uh, I did I tried a few other things uh, dug, dug in pretty deep to the the Gunslinger series but eventually dropped it um, so uh, now and I but I think this is one of his greatest stories and of course um, you know pandemic the whole thing is actually about a much worse pandemic that kills off a huge uh, huge portion of the uh, the population and that's that's not a spoiler that's in the first page of the book and in the first few opening minutes of the movie it's so the premise. Uh, yeah it's the premise right so. I'm a, I'm actually I'm actually really interested in seeing a new treatment of it. Um, I thought that the the miniseries was eh. Um, <laughs> so uh, the '90s miniseries. Yeah, I've seen was just bits eh. and pieces of it. Like my uh, my yeah. former roommate uh-huh. is a massive Stephen King fan. He reads every uh-huh. King uh, piece of mm-hmm. work and watches every uh, everything that they do. And and you know I I stepped in every now and again, saw little bits and pieces, and I was like, what is this trash? The quality <laughs> is garbage. That's I, I sometimes think that too. But he, the thing is, he he actually is a great writer at times and has and does these and does this incredible storytelling. It's just that he writes so much, <laughs> you know, that, that yeah. it's, some of it's not you know some of it's not great. It's a bit like improv, you know. You and I have both done a bunch it's of improv. It's not all going to be gold. It's not <laughs> no. all going to be gold. So. Um, but I think the stand is among his best work, his very best work, uh, and so um, I'm really looking forward to see how they do it. Now, uh, so there's a there's a term in in film uh, that I'm sure you've probably heard. Uh, it's 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 magical Negro. Have you heard this? Oh uh, no. Um. Okay, so <laughs> it's a trope. It's a trope. I, I apologize. I hope that's not offensive to anyone. The it's a well known okay. thing, but the it's a trope. It's that. If you have a black person in the film, they are um, uh, this. Uh, they're they have special insight. They have special. Okay, right. I, I think the, I have heard of the it's, yeah, uh, same thing. Yeah. The Green Mile uh, kind of fell into this trap. Yes. Yeah. So as soon as you said Whoopi Goldberg was in it, and you didn't even know what I meant when I said this, but I was like, oh gee, I wonder who she's playing. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> so, that was like, so anyway, the uh, but that's actually good because I think she's she'll be a great choice for that character. Sure. Um, she will she will definitely. 
she has that air about her and she'll do a really good job with that character. But, um, but yeah, that's a, that's one of Steven's things that he does. Um, so the, uh, the gunslinger movie just died. I never saw oh, it. The Dark Tower and with I, Idris Elba? Yeah, The Dark Tower, right, yeah. Oh, it, it was it, bad. I, did you see? It was bad. Yeah. Um, it was, because I had only seen The Gunslinger. Uh, I'm sorry, I had only read the book, The Gunslinger, uh, which is part of the entire Dark Tower series, uh, Gunslinger being the first in the series. Um, it was, I don't know, I, I felt like nothing happened in The Gunslinger. Um, I... I it, I guess tone uh, like earlier we were talking like tone and atmosphere. Um, it had a lot of tone, had a lot of atmosphere, uh, but nothing yeah. happened in the book, and it didn't give me enough interest to continue on with the series. Uh, so when we actually sat down and watched the movie in theaters, I know my roommate, uh, like like I said, huge Stephen King fan. Um, he was so. I, I don't want to say he was so excited for it. He was looking forward to it to see like what they were going to do with the subject matter and material. Uh, it was a train wreck. It was a complete train wreck. I was wreck. looking forward to it as well. I was looking forward to it too. And I never ended up seeing it because I just heard that it was like, oh, that's such a train wreck. And uh, who was the who was the actor that played? Matthew um, McConaughey? Uh, uh, oh, no. Jake? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the the main guy. Um, Idris anyway, Elba? He's a, Thank you. That's it. Idris Elba. So yeah, I was really looking forward to it. I was really looking forward to him seeing that part, but I just didn't even end up seeing it, um, which is which is a bummer. But th that's like if stop me if I shouldn't go in this direction. But one of the problems with genre fiction in general, uh, this is this is snob Ryan speaking. <laughs> one, of, one, of, one of the problems with genre fiction in general is that it's focused too much on the genre and not on important things like characterization, storytelling. So. You know, you can get so caught up in the genre that you just lose characters and storytelling, yeah. and um, and that's the danger of a genre like horror. Or you could even you could even argue that Stephen King is like fantasy horror. He's, he's sort of on the line sometimes, yeah. um, but he's he's so caught up in scaring the crap out of you, which he does an extremely good job of. That he does. <laughs> yes, he does. That um, yeah, that it's it's kind of like well, I want to be able to connect to the characters more, and you could scare me even more. If I could connect with the characters and the story more, you could scare me on a deeper level. Um, but since I'm not really believing this world you created, uh, you know, it's a bit that, yeah, like I said, that's, well, I will let that's... him scare you. Uh, as, as some of our <laughs> viewers know, I can't stand being scared. It is. Uh, I remember we went to go see uh, it chapter one in theaters Ooh. and I, it's a, it's a fantastic movie. It, I actually, dare I say, loved the movie. It was really well told, uh, great characters, great setup, great, you know, uh, uh, tone and mystery and intrigue and, and all that. I thought it was fantastic. It scared the living daylights out of me, and I couldn't sleep for four <laughs> months. I kid you not, four months, I had to sleep with the, with the lights on. It, the, the last the last movie that did that to me was Blair Witch Project ooh. way back um, because I don't see horror very often sure. either. And when I saw Blair Witch Project, I I remember I went I went with a friend who I worked with, and then I went back to my office afterwards, and it was after hours, yeah. and I saw him walking around in these cubicles and like checking every corner and like, <laughs> like jumping. It just scared me to and death. Also, so yeah, I'm not not very big on horror. You brought up either, a great point. So. Uh, I mean, we're getting way off topic here, but let's delve in for a second. <laughs> right. um, Blair Witch Project. It was also the first of its kind. Nobody had done a full length feature found footage film before and the marketing of the film was that this was a documentary that's how mm -hmm. they played this movie and people i remember people were i don't know if people had heart attacks per se in the movie theaters but people were losing their minds and people mm -hmm. were having panic attacks um i remember a couple of instances where um uh, ambulances had to show up to movie theaters because people were passing out <laughs> because they were so scared and terrified of stuff like this people were running out i remember uh do you remember uh the the reports of people vomiting for how scared sure. they were in the theaters i've never heard that of any other film ever people were vomiting i think the Exorcist, when it first came out, there was that kind of media um, hype about it. Um, you know, I think it also got The Exorcist when it came out in the seventies, also attached to um, uh, to sort of a, a moral or religious scare. Yeah. You know, um, so that 
So yeah, and I wonder, I, I think maybe a few of those reports are probably true, and most of them are some, on some level very effective marketing. I hope marketing. they're true. <laughs> like, a woman gave birth during it. Like, yeah, how crazy is that? I, I would love for all of these things to be true. Anyway, guys, uh, The Stand, uh, like, we got way off topic. Uh, Stephen King's The Stand, the new miniseries, uh, drops, uh, I think, at the uh, in December... Uh, I think it com comes out December 17th. Um, did you see the trailer? Are you excited for it? Does it get you interested? Um, do you have no interest whatsoever? Jump on down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. All right, guys, we have one last piece of movie news to cover before we move on and take uh, some of your uh, uh, emailed questions. And this comes from Deadline. And in Deadline, uh, they this is I think this is a really interesting... Um, You guys, Siri is talking to me right now, and she wants to send me email on my Apple Watch. Great. Uh, this is coming to us from Deadline. Uh, this is a really interesting story that I think is quite uh, – I think this is a marketing win for Netflix. Netflix is creating a separate site. Uh, it's like Netflix.com slash free dash movies or something like that. Um, and they are putting out a list of movies and television shows that are Netflix originals for free. Uh, most predominantly, Bird Box, The Two Popes, uh, various episodes of Stranger Things. Um, I know they have. Uh, was it blind? Was it blind dating? It was. Was that a show that uh, that was on? Netflix, they have a, a it's a it's a small list. It's a small list, but some of their more high profile uh, films and television shows they are releasing on this website for free just to get people interested in the Netflix streaming service. Which brings up two questions for me. Ryan, number one, do you think this is a smart marketing strategy? Number two, is Netflix in trouble? Oh man. I'm gonna go with two first. I can't imagine Netflix being in trouble right now. Now, I'll admit that I'm not super knowledgeable or savvy about the movie industry. I, I but when you asked me to do this, I was scrubbing through your last episode, and I was like, your guest and you were talking a lot about industry stuff, and I was like, eee. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, so You're I'm not welcome. super savvy about all this stuff. <laughs> I'm uh, like, Ooh. but uh, I can't imagine Netflix being in trouble right now. The um, Especially with, I mean, I think I'm, you know, again, the pandemic, it seems like it would be more, more useful than ever right now. And more, it seems like they would have more subscribers. Um, and they're also, they've also made some incredible original content, you know? Um, that's the thing about, that blows my mind about all the streaming, all the streaming uh, services is the, uh, the great original content they're making. But I'm sorry, I don't completely understand what's happening here. Like you said, they're streaming some things they're streaming some netflix like through other um avenues like i don't i don't understand yeah, so the story. so netflix uh so if you just jump on netflix.com you can either sign into your account or if you don't already have right. one you can create an account and you know pay your subscription fee or whatever and then you get to watch netflix's entire billions upon billions of titles that they have available um right so what they're doing now is they are creating a separate website that requires no subscription. You don't have to sign up for anything. Uh, it's not even a free account. They're just free streaming films. You don't have to create an account. So you just go to, I, I, I don't think the, the website is up and running just yet, but whatever the website is, it's like, uh, hold on, hang on, oh, let's, that's awesome. let's uh, let me look this up real quick. Sure, go ahead. I can Me like it, they're trying to make it an entry point. Like it's a way to like because if especially if you if you stream selected episodes of Stranger Things, guess what's going to happen then? You know, everybody's going to want to go see all the episodes of Stranger oh, Things. You know, that first season. You know, that first season is pretty amazing. I don't think people are if you show them the first one or two episodes, you're just going to draw them in and get them to buy a subscription. So, I think it is smart. I think just thinking about it right now, it seems smart to me. Um, and I don't think they're in trouble. I could be totally wrong. I am not particularly well versed in this sort of thing. Okay. But that 
So I just uh, looked it up. Uh, here we are on their uh, website. It is uh, netflix.com slash watch dash free. Um, so it looks like uh, it says unlimited TV shows and movies. This is uh, obviously Netflix. Um, so the first TV show that they have up is uh, Stranger Things. The first property they have is uh, Stranger Things. Uh, it gives like a little bit of... Uh, description as to what Stranger Things is, and there's there's a button that says Watch Now. Um, you scroll down, there's Murder Mystery. You scroll down, there's the TV show Elite. You scroll down, there's the movie Boss Baby, Bird Box, When They See Us, Love Is Blind, The Two Popes, and on and on and on. Uh, they have a, a few different things here. Um, at the risk of copyright uh, infringement, I am going to click on Watch Now for Stranger Things. Um, let's see what this brings up. Is this just going to parents strongly caution may not be suitable for ages 14 and under. Okay. Yeah. And now we, I'm not actually going to uh, stream this cause that would be illegal. Um, uh, but yeah, head on over to, um, Netflix. What was it? Netflix.com slash watch dash free um is the address and yeah they have a whole bunch of things for free you don't have to create a an account um you just click on the thing and then just start watching um now in the article they did say this this service is not available on apple products i'm sorry it's available on apple tv i'll have to go back in three read the article it's on uh, it's on deadline um there are certain I know it's not streaming on Fire Stick. Um, it's not streaming on iPhone. You cannot get this on iPhone. You can get it on Android, but you cannot get this on iPhone. Um, which is curious to me. I wonder if I could stream on this I mean, I'm using a, a MacBook Pro right now. I'm wondering if I could stream it on my MacBook Pro. I'll check it out later. I don't wanna I don't wanna mess up bandwidth sure, with sure, you sure, by yeah. trying to do that. But um that's I think it's smart. I think it's just a way to draw people in. Like uh in fact, you know, just thinking about it now, it's like, oh, man, you show somebody those first two episodes of Stranger Things, you've got a subscriber if they're into it, yeah. you know, at all. Yeah. You, it's like, I think it's really smart. I agree. So, I, yeah. I think it's a brilliant piece of marketing. Um, just, you know, Stranger Things is such a great show. Hey, if you put two or three episodes out for free, just say, hey, everyone, come on over to Netflix free watch and just watch, you know, first few episodes for free. Get them hooked. Get them to sign up. Um, yeah, I, I also agree. I <laughs> I'm just, drug dealer drug dealer marketing first yeah one's, first one's free. first one's free <laughs> first one's on us but uh, uh, uh can i get some more of that uh stranger things there you go anyway guys uh what do you think do you have a differing opinion do you think that it's a bad idea uh for netflix to do this do you th actually think that netflix might be hurting are they in the in the red on any for any particular reason i don't think so but maybe you have a different insight go and uh, jump down to the comment section below and let me know your thoughts all right guys uh that will do it for the email uh the email that will do it for our movie news today uh we spent a lot of time on movie news uh let's see how fast we can breeze through our uh monday day of the week special Right, you guys. Uh, today is Monday. We are testing out a brand new, um, brand new segment called uh, "What We Watched This Weekend." In fact, I think that's I think that's what it's called. I don't know. I named it. I don't know. Whatever. Um, here's what I was watching this weekend: Cobra Kai. Um, it, again, it just dropped on Netflix. We're talking about Netflix. It dropped on Netflix. This originally was a YouTube original. Uh, nobody watched it. I believe uh, YouTube sold it to Netflix, and now Netflix is going to be producing season three, um, which is yet to drop. Uh, we have seasons one and two, and my girlfriend and I just binged the whole thing, as did the entire world, it seems like. Everybody on social media, was uh, everybody was just straight up talking about Cobra Kai, how much they loved it. This is not... Uh, I don't want to say it's not a good show. It is a good show. It's fun. It's interesting. Uh, the characters are ridiculous, but that's the thing. The characters are ridiculous. Uh, the characterizations are silly. Um, 
the whole premise it's you know cobra kai uh is this uh karate club that is kind of like the oh we're the mean uh guy, people we're not gonna take no for an answer we're gonna do what we want to do and you can't stop us uh and for whatever reason this karate club became like the cool thing to do because now they could like beat people up or whatever it is completely silly it is completely ridiculous and the dialogue is abysmal ryan I, I can hear you laughing nobody else can nobody else can hear you laughing ryan is cackling uh on his side of skype the dialogue is absolutely abysmal having said that this show is so fun it's so fun. It brings back everything that you love about like the 80s and especially the original Karate Kid movies. Um, it's so fun. It's stupid. This is the kind of show that you can have on in the background or you can just sit down and binge it straight and just you know, like never look away from the screen. It's silly. It's fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, Ryan, did you see any of this? So I was actually one of the people who watched it on YouTube, um, but I, I only watched the first couple of episodes. I had a friend, I have a friend, um, you actually have probably met him, Andreas Fabus, and he, uh, yeah, and he, uh, he, we worked together and he was like, oh, you got to check this out. And the thing is like, you know, I've already given away my age. I was a teenager in the eighties. Karate Kid was actually a very like important movie to me when I was a teenager, you know, yeah. um, I identified with Daniel LaRusso. Forgive me. <laughs> you, know? you were a bully too. <laughs> I, no, ah, see now that's the interesting question, right? Daniel um, LaRusso, so, he's, uh, he's not <laughs> entirely a hero. That's, well, that's, that's, and see, that's the great thing about it. Like I only watched the first two episodes. I've heard more people talk about it. It's one of those things, again, you know, trying to get my wife to watch it with me, right? Where, But she's younger than I am. She's like 10 years younger than I am. So it's like um, she doesn't have the same nostalgia for it as I do. Yeah. And, you know, when you, the reason why I was laughing when you talked about the dialogue being abysmal, because I'm sure the dialogue in the original films was completely oh, abysmal sure. too, but I, did, I didn't know it. I didn't care. You're not there. It's not the kind of show that you show up for the di oh oh I heard this karate movie has great dialogue action scenes are meh but boy it's almost like uh, 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 the guy from the Social Network wrote this. Well, the um, I really liked the story at the time. I really liked the um, uh, the the you know bully kid sticks up for himself i mean that was to me and the type you know i'm a pretty nerdy dude <laughs> at the time that was pretty important to me so um but then of course i've grown up and i've gotten more into interesting narratives and and i do love the way they're reversing it because now the question is you know hey is daniel the asshole oh it's <laughs> that's number two that's number two. Oh, three strikes and you're out ryan it's it's <laughs> sorry oh i, I almost caught it I right almost there you right it's, there you know what's funny i told you before i have a two and a half year old so this is good <laughs> practice again <laughs> um when, when they're an so, infant uh, you can still use those types of words but man when they they, get it mm -mm. but so yeah is daniel the jerk is daniel the bully you know is he really the bully um and it's a and it's actually a really interesting question. And you know, me being the literary snob that I am, <laughs> I enjoy that sort of thing. It's like, wow, this is really cool. That and it's it the dialogue is terrible and it's totally cheesy. And I had a friend recently say, like, this is unwatchable. And and I understand where he's coming from. But but I also want to say, like, it's a super interesting question and, and it's not it's not like, you know, it, it's not just – they're asking some very interesting questions they are. by doing and this. Also, First thing, the way mm -hmm. the story plays out is actually quite fascinating uh, because it's uh, – it's, it, it's – yeah, it's silly, it's cheesy, but like you said, they're asking some really important questions and they're delving into, like, what is status? I think status is a really interesting thing to explore in storytelling. Um, so they're exploring status, they're exploring, like, what does it mean to be a bully? Um, like, how can, how is it possible for, a, a, what's the phrase, a leopard to change his spots? Um, like, how do you... How do you become the traditional villain and not at the same time? Like, how do you humanize people in a way that we all kind of matter? Anyway, we could go on and on and on and on. Um, did it's you guys have – say what? 
It's, it's super interesting. It's Go super ahead. interesting. <laughs> I hi- I would I would recommend this. Um, mm-hmm. It's not a great show, but it's as we said before, it's an interesting show and it holds your attention. Um, also, uh, the the kid, uh, oh she, Johnny, Johnny Lawrence is that his yeah. name? Johnny mm-hmm. Lawrence's son, uh, with kind of like the long hair down to his like his jowls. Um, I swear he he feels like the kind of character that belongs in Full House. Yeah, <laughs> he's that he's that kind of like Joey Lawrence. Uh, I, uh, Johnny whoa. Lawrence, Joey Lawrence. Whoa! <laughs> like I feel like he's a transplant from one uh-huh. franchise to another. Anyway, That's did you guys funny. have a chance to see this? Uh, jump down in the comment section below. Let us know what you think about Cobra Kai. All right, Ryan, I'm gonna pass this to you. You and Jen uh started watching Umbrella Academy. Tell me a little bit about Umbrella Academy. Now, most of my watching time is with my wife. And I love that. I love watching stuff with my wife. It's great. It's a great way to bond. The first thing we watched that we really loved together was the new Battlestar Galactica, you know, a few, you know, 10 years ago or whatever. Um, yeah, we, and we loved that. It was so great. And it was right up both of our alleys. We both loved it. So we keep trying to find that sweet spot, right, that we both really enjoy when where neither person feels like they're, like, giving up a little bit for the other one, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and and so we tried Umbrella Academy. Uh, we it did not hit the sweet spot. <laughs> um, it's uh, I liked it. It is, but it is definitely um, comic book genre movie uh, with a heavy dose of family relationships. Um, oh, whoa! That, yeah, yeah, that are now. I did. I'm not. This is one of those. I am was not familiar with the book beforehand. You know, I was not familiar with the comics beforehand. Um, uh, and but and also some really good act. Ellen Page. For one thing, which kind of surprised me, but um, Ellen Page for me is a little hit or miss. It depends on really what interesting. In. Depends I on like her. In. Okay, I like her a lot. Um, and uh, and uh, you know, like I said, I only watched two episodes because that was the guarantee that I got from my wife was that we would watch two episodes before we made a decision. Uh, Jen, halfway through the second episode, she was like, "I'm sorry, babe, I'm out." <laughs> that was like, <laughs> and it was during a torture. It was during a torture scene. So, so it is. There's violence, but it's comic booky violence, uh, which is also really fun at yeah. times. Um, and um, it's uh, lots of heavy dose of family relationships, very much in the comic book genre. And I think that is where we went, like where it split us. Like I'm yeah. used to the comic book genre. I know what it's about. I know, you know, there's there's time travel. There's, you know, there's all these different things coming at you and you just have to be willing to accept it. And my wife is not, that far she's into it quite, so she's not there yet. yeah she's not there yeah, so i'm um, uh, so and so she and i was like yeah it's cool babe i understand i had a moment of like Ugh, and then i was like no that's i get it it's fine no problem and that's, it's it's hard when like <laughs> you love something so deeply so passionately and you want the rest of the world to love everything that you love on the same level and it just you know it's you know i think that's why we all should start taking improv classes and learn how to communicate with each other you guys that's what it's all about. My wife um, and I met doing improv, so there you go. Aw, my girlfriend <laughs> and I too. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Creating relationships both on and off stage. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, what did you have? Uh, what did you have a chance to see? Did you have a chance to see Umbrella Academy? Uh, did you love it? Did you hate it? Are you somewhere in between? Let me know in the comment section below. I personally have only seen season one of Umbrella Academy. I loved it. Um, I have, I've just had so many things on my plate. I haven't had a chance to start season two yet, but really looking forward to it. Um, yeah, like I said, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. All right, uh, moving on to the next uh, thing that I was watching this weekend, and that was Lovecraft Country. Uh, we're currently in episode three. Uh, those are all the episodes that have been made available to us right now. Um, yeah, so Kim and I sat down to watch uh, Lovecraft Country uh, when the first episode dropped, and then we watched episode two, and then we watched episode three. Ryan, I believe I am one of the very few people in the world. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I, I don't think this is a good show. Okay. You, I, you, you intimated this to me earlier. I have not seen it yet. I understand I am in the vast minority uh, of people that, in fact, I don't actually know anybody else who doesn't like the show. Um, well, it, you know, except for my girlfriend, um, w- we have talked about this. We have debated it. 
Um, I have talked about this with so many other people, and every single person I have ever spoken to about Lovecraft Country loves it beyond anything else. They think it is one of the greatest television shows of all time, and I don't begrudge anybody that. I am glad, I am pleased that people love this uh, show on the level that they do. For me, and of course, no spoilers, I'm not going to spoil anything <clears throat> if you haven't seen it yet, if you're looking forward to seeing it, uh, maybe if you've seen like one episode or whatever, I'm not, I'm not going to go into spoilers, I'm not going to talk about s- specifics. In a general sense, I do not think the characterizations are very good. Um, we're not, again, my, my subjective opinion here, I do not feel like we're given any reasons to care about the characters, nor do I think the characters themselves are showing us how they care about these things that are happening. Um, You know, if you've seen the trailer, you know, the basic idea, the basic story is that our main, the main character, his name is Tick. It's either T-I-C or something like that. Tick. Um, uh, So Tick... The, t- uh, the main character, his father has gone missing. He receives a letter from him, uh, from his father, saying like, hey, if you get this letter, something's happened to me, come find me. And so he and his uncle, um, uh, they team up and they start looking for uh, this guy's dad. And they have to go to Lovecraft Country, in, su- supposedly in Massachusetts or something. And then weird things start happening. Uh, and... This world, this universe that they're creating, I don't understand the rules to this world. Um, I don't understand, like, when the weird stuff happens, when the Lovecraftian things come out. Um, I don't understand, A, why why they're coming out, um, nor do I understand, like, anyone's reaction to any of this stuff. Um uh, Ryan, you just uh, put a little something in my ear. What, what's on your mind? So I that so we talked about this earlier, and I'm actually um, a, a Lovecraft aficionado. Oh, perfect. H.P. Perfect. H, H. Lovecraft, who is the um, uh, the original author of all these really bizarre cosmic horror stories they call them and let me just say right now he was a horrible racist (laughs) and that like really over the top it's you know he lived in the early 1900s right so um and i do not i'm not with him on that (laughs) no 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 (laughs) i I, I think it's pretty safe to assume none of us are (laughs) condoning that that's wicked that is evil like he was a horrible awful person i want to get out there but i'm but i've really uh but i but is he's had a huge influence on horror. He was a pulp horror writer, and he's had a huge influence on horror. And you know, and even you know, even black horror writers and authors now will will you know say that yeah, he was the huge influence, and that's you know, and that's just how it is. And you know, but if you think about all the authors throughout the history of the world, all the creators, you know, they lots of them had all these different things. So uh, point not to excuse it, but. So, uh, but I have a lot of familiarity with Lovecraft. I, the reason why we met uh, was because I was in Alaska for their uh, improv festival doing a Lovecraft-based horror, um, improv show. Right. Um, so I've read like most of his stuff, most of H.P. Lovecraft show stuff. I've heard that what this show does, I have not watched the show. I've heard that what this show does is turns that on its ear and sort of deals with Lovecraft's racism and in a, um, in a more modern setting and, and, um, so I'm really mm-hmm. interested to see what that was. The thought I had when you said the reason why I like, oh, in your ear when nobody else could hear me was because <laughs> you, I think when you're saying you don't understand the world, that might actually be it. Because his world is very specific and very weird. And it may be just that you don't have any familiarity with Lovecraft's world. Um, it's, it's not that uh, – because, I mean, there's a lot of worlds that I, we're not familiar with. And last night sure. I was having this uh, this conversation with a friend of mine about the TV show Lost. Um, lo- I mean, I think we can all agree lost, lost its way. It, like, <laughs> but having said that, the first few seasons were incredible. Granted, they didn't give us any answers whatsoever, but they deliver they they made promises and they acknowledged that this is a weird world. Um, and the characters cared about the things that were happening in a way. Um, Okay, let me let me put it like this. If a grizzly bear wandered into New York City and started tearing people apart, we all as human people would have a very visceral reaction to that. Sure. We would react in 
a WTF kind of like, what in the world has happened? Like, how did a bear get in New York City? Mm. If the time-space continuum were to open up and a parallel dimension opens in the sky and Cthulhu's and um, uh, uh, unicorns Shots. and dragons <laughs> and like all these creatures that we know can't exist and don't exist if they just start existing and start you know wreaking havoc on new york city that's a whole nother level. we're not going to have the same reaction that we would to a bear tearing people apart in the middle of new york city right it's and and it's that level of reaction that i'm talking about like when the weird stuff happens in the show the characters are just kind of like, oh, some bad things are going down. We got to get out of here. And then after it's over, they're like, well, that was weird. Hey, what do you think about what happened? Wasn't that weird? And, um, I, you know, I, I, I can't give any spoilers out, but they don't deal with the aftermath of any of these weird paranormal things that are happening in a way that makes sense for me the viewing audience to have an entry point into the story like well and that's i don't that's very i don't care it's well and that's very unfortunate because i think that is actually one of hp lovecraft the author's strengths is that he presents these very 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 weird horrific things that happen and he and and the people in his stories generally go insane because of them that's that's what happens and he and he well <clears throat> And in it, something that I've had a gripe about with adventure fiction or science fiction or anything for a long time, like the crew of the Enterprise would be completely blanking insane. I finally stopped doing it, Mike. Um, <laughs> they, they would be completely insane. Like if you look at – like it's not a realistic depiction of human psychology, right? Like, like if you have all these bizarre things thrown at you year after year after year, it's going to have a huge effect on you. It's going to hurt you, sure, right? Yeah. And so – yeah, and so and Lovecraft as an author, he was really good at that. Like his like having this secret knowledge about these horrible things really having a deep and lasting effect on you is like one of the main points of his fiction. So it's really unfortunate that they didn't get that right. And it almost makes me think like, hmm, are they setting us up for something? I mean, it you know? very well could be. In in episode <laughs> three, I will say this about episode three. Again, no spoilers. It's it's more of a standalone episode. Um, that's all the more I'm going to say about it, um, which on one side of the coin is a little disappointing because I want to know the fallout of episodes one and two. But it's also kind of cool that it's kind of its own vignette. It's its own thing. Excuse me. It's its own like little standalone story. Um, and from that from, uh, from that regard, it's it kind of makes it a little bit more episodic and more palatable. Um, mm -hmm. earlier you had mentioned, uh, like, uh, you know, HP Lovecraft being a horrible racist and how, yes, this, uh, story, this incarnation deals with that in a way that turns it on it, uh, on its head so that HP Lovecraft is not just going to be turning over in his grave. He's going to be doing backflips inside of his casket. <laughs> um, and Good. I love that. I like, Good. I think that's really cool. Um, uh, I have other thoughts about that, but uh, I, I think that's about as much as I feel comfortable saying. I don't want to give anything away. If you're watching it, you know, what do you think? Uh, if you're not watching it, are you looking forward to seeing it? Um, have I discouraged you at all? Like I said, I'm the, to my knowledge, I'm the only person on the planet that does not think this is a good show. Do you think this is a good show? Lovecraft Country. Jump on down to the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts and let me know why you think Lovecraft Country is a good show in terms of the characterizations and the storytelling. Because those are the aspects of the show that I personally have a problem with. All right. Uh, Lovecraft Country. Let's move on. Um, uh, Ryan, earlier you were telling me that you are watching uh, as uh, doing your daily exercises. You're going through uh, Avatar, The Last Airbender. Series, uh, but I know people. Some people do like it, and I just heard so many good things about it. Um, you know, this is the this is my alone TV watching time, and also uh, I I 
write a cycling trainer in my room and I have the TV in front of me, right? So it's good to have perfect small small chunks, right? Perfect. Uh, and, and the episodes are about twenty to thirty minutes long, right? So um, I'm really enjoying it. Um, I'm about I'm almost all the way through the first season. Um, it's it's a great show. Uh, I think uh, it is a kids show, but I'm down with that because I've got a kid and um, uh, I want to be. Uh, prepping him, I'm already getting him. Uh, I'm already getting him to watch everything from Studio Ghibli that is that is uh, appropriate for him, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, no um, Adult Swim just yet. <laughs> no, 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 no. But uh, no Spirited Away. Who's no too much? <laughs> but definitely Ponyo. Definitely uh, uh, Kiki's Delivery Service. He loves those. Nice. So um, yeah, so I'm really enjoying it. Um, I can't wait to see where it goes. Uh, uh, and I really was interested in like what this world and uh, because so many people talked about how good it was um so i really wanted to get to know the world and it's got some very familiar fantasy tropes um you know um the elements being uh magical powers being aligned with the elements which is fun um it is it is like three young people traveling around at the moment mostly um so it's but it's got that uh high fantasy um uh quest trope you know now, they're off on i've a- never watched the show um i anime is just it just it's one of those things that it just holds no interest with me whatsoever having said that um mm-hmm. i am looking forward to the netflix series the live action netflix series coming out i did see the movie um uh, the movie wasn't great but also i hadn't watched the anime so i was like Meh, it's it's okay i did i didn't mind the movie i know other people loathe it um sure that's fine like, who cares whatever <laughs> film is subjective blah 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 whatever um when the the live action netflix series comes to netflix i will most definitely be watching that that is something that i'm interested in because everything of what i've heard um like season one of the show is definitely more geared to uh a a children-based audience but seasons two and three again from what i hear is uh more adult it's a little bit more grown up in its storytelling um have you heard this uh does that give you hope for future seasons I have not heard that, but it does give me hope for future seasons. I'm now. I'm hoping that maybe it'll be like one of those things that grows up with the audience, like Harry Potter or something like right. that. You know, that it like as you watch it, it it grows up. It grows up with the the people who are watching it. So that will be cool because yeah, it's a little it's a little too kiddified right now. But I've heard so many good things about it that I'm right. that I'm looking forward to it. So and it's a bit like I said, it's kind of like fantasy. It's a little bit of like a kung fu movie too. Yeah. Um, and it's anime and it's, um, it's, it's fun. Cool. So, yeah. Well, are yeah. you guys watching Avatar The Last End, but Airbender, have you watched Avatar The Last Airbender, the animated series? Um, how do you compare that, uh, the animated series against the movie? Um, and are you guys looking for the live action Netflix, uh, reboot, I guess, remake? Uh, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. All right, guys, I have one last television show to talk about, and this is going to be brief. Uh, this is... I, I dare say this is my guilty pleasure. This is something that I've been watching all week and especially last weekend. It is the 1966 incarnation of Batman. That's right. Uh, iTunes recently put the the complete series out on uh, uh, on iTunes uh, for 20 bucks. Uh, previously, I think each season itself was like 15 or twenty dollars per season, and then they just had the entire box set. It was like, you know what? Um, uh, uh, the Batman, Matt Reeves just dropped the Batman trailer um, during uh, DC Fandom uh, two weekends ago, and as a result, they dropped the entire season, or sorry, the entire series of the 1966 Batman television show uh, with Burt Ward and uh, Adam West for 20 bucks. So I said, you know, let's let's buy it. Why not? Let's download this thing. So I have systematically been watching. Uh, various episodes uh, like in in order of Batman the 1966 television show and I have got to say you guys I love this show it's so silly it's so campy it's it's over the top and under the bottom at the same time I I, I don't know how else to describe it it's silly it's cheesy the storylines don't make any sense the villains are ridiculous uh, horrible characterizations. The Riddler is just the dumbest character. I mean, like, oh my gosh, they they do this one thing where uh, Joker's in prison and he the way he escapes from prison. This is 
so silly and I love it. He's uh, is to like reward the prisoners for like, hey, you guys have been good prisoners all these years. You get to play baseball. So they're all out in like the middle of the prison field playing baseball. And the Joker has has a like a fake ball or whatever. He throws the pitch. Um, a hu- you know, the batter swings, he connects with the ball, a huge puff of smoke, distracting everybody else. And while that's happening, the Joker on the pitcher's mound is lifted into the air off of a giant spring or coil. He's standing on like on the on the pitcher's mound diamond, right? And he just boing, 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 up into the air, up over the wall, and that's how he escapes. And it's the dumbest thing. Um, and I loved it. I loved it. I am eating this series up. Ryan, have you had a chance to watch the 66 Batman series? What do you think? <laughs> so this is actually the first incarnation of Batman I was Batman I was ever familiar with. I mean, I used to watch it in syndication in the 70s and and um uh, uh and so this is what I thought Batman was for many, many years. Um I didn't even read any comic of the comic books or anything. Sure. So when so when Batman became like uh, you know, grim dark gritty reboot, right? Which was also possibly more like what he was like in the earlier comic books. But, uh, you know, it was a surprise and I enjoyed that incarnation of him, but this is like the original Batman to me. And you're right. It is, it is the most ridiculous cheese ball, goofball. It's funny and dumb. Uh, and Adam West and, and Burt Ward are just, just goofballs. And, uh, it's, it's definitely worth watching it, especially, you know, if you like Batman and you haven't seen this, you, you need to see it and it, you know, who knows, it might make you cringe, but it, uh, it's oh, definitely, definitely worth seeing. I love this thing so much, uh, so much. I, I'm having a really fun time watching this. If you haven't had an opportunity to watch the original 66 Batman, uh, the, I, I do take my issues with the movie because the movie is not quite the same as the TV show. The TV show is much campier. The TV show is much more colorful. Um, uh, I'm and just, it's lighthearted and it's silly. And it's something that I personally need in my life. I feel like this is my perfect escape. Um, we live in a weird, weird world. Uh, people are hateful. People say hurt, hurtful, harmful things to each other. Um, it's a weird, it's a weird time to be alive, guys. It's a weird time to be alive. And the 66 Batman TV show is totally bringing me back to uh, to some happier times, to times where we can just forget our problems, forget our issues, and just sit back, relax, and have a weird, enjoyable ride. Anyway, have you had a chance to watch the 66 Batman uh, series? Jump down to the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts. Are there any favorite episodes of yours? Who is your favorite villain? Um... In the 66 Batman uh, series, go ahead and let me know your thoughts. All right, guys, um, that will do it for uh, for all of our uh, our movie news and our uh, special topics for today. We only only have one more segment uh, before we get into your live questions. Uh, Ryan, how you doing on time? Uh, 20 more minutes good so uh well hopefully this won't take that much longer uh you guys Mm -hmm. it is now time to open up that gotta love them movies mailbag All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is time to open up the Gotta Love the Movies mailbag. But before we do, I need to let you know if there's anything that you specifically want to talk about, I am available 24-7 at Gotta Love Them Movies at gmail.com. Go ahead and send me an email anytime, day or night. Um, I'm always available. Uh, let me know what you want to talk about. Is there any particular subject? Is there something that you read in the news? Is there something that I haven't covered yet that you think is newsworthy? Go ahead and let me know in that email. Uh, we can talk about anything, movie, movie news, industry stuff. Any question that's been on your mind, how does this work? Like I said, send me uh, uh, send me an email at gotalovethemovies at gmail.com, and we will address that here on the show. Anyway, guys, it is now time for our first, and I believe this is our only email question for the day, which is good because the show is it's running a little long. Uh, this question comes from Matthew. He is from Leeds in the UK, and Matthew says, Hey, Mike. What do you think of the amount of Marvel releases this year? Two years smooshed together. That is right. Uh, Matthew is completely on the mark here. Um, With all of the COVID-19 stuff happening um, and all of the movie theaters being shut down, all of the uh, 
studios releases have had to get pushed back specifically the mcu um uh we have an article from uh was it comic book comic book research or maybe it's just comicbook.com uh i should have uh had this See, there's always, Ryan, anytime uh, we do a live show, there's always at least one thing that I'm missing. Uh, Here we go. Cool. Uh, Ta-da. All right. So I'm just going to, so this comes from comicbook.com. And uh, what they've done is they have taken all of the Marvel releases that were supposed to come out this year and have been pushed back into 2021. I'm just going to scroll through the website, as you can see. Um. Black Widow got pushed back to November of this year, um, as has um, uh, WandaVision and uh, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Those are the shows in the movie uh, that were supposed to come out this year. There were other movies and things that were supposed to come out this year as well. Everything has just been pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. So we're just going to cover some of that stuff right now. First of all, uh, February 12th. Next year, we have The Eternals coming out. And by the way, guys, um, I just want to let you know, these are um, these are movies and television shows that uh, may hold their release dates and they may continue to get pushed back. Some of some of the ones in the later on in the year, um, it's my personal opinion that they are not going to hold their release dates as they are currently set. Um, And we'll talk about that as we go through. Um, But here we have The Eternals. Um, movie coming out February 12th. I think that's going to hold its release date. I think that's going to keep uh, most likely. Uh, scrolling on down, we have or some t- we don't have any definitive dates yet, but we have What If, uh, the Disney Plus show, and we have the Loki television show coming out early in 2021. No dates have been announced for that yet. Um, Sony, in their Spider-Verse, are uh, March 19th. They have Morbius, uh, Starling, star, Starling, starring Jared Leto and um, uh, Batman himself, Michael Keaton. Uh, May 7th, we have Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. June 25th, Venom 2, also in the Sony Spider-Verse. Uh, again, no dates have been set for Hawkeye, Ms. Marvel, She-Hulk, or Moon Knight, uh, but those are slated to come out in the second half of 2021 and finishing out the year with uh, the MCU slash Spider-Verse. December 17th, we have Spider-Man 3. Uh, Tentatively, this uh, film is being subtitled Homesick. We're not entirely sure if that is the exact title of what they're going with. Personally, I hope that it's going to be Spider-Man Home Sweet Home. But Spider-Man Homesick, I guess, works. Um, I'm not entirely sure. All right. So so let's start talking about this for a second. Uh, we have the Eternals coming out. Like I said, I'm pretty sure that's going to keep its release date. Then we have the What If series on Disney+, Plus, and we have the Loki TV show. I think the Loki show will hold its release date. I think Loki is going to hold its release date. I don't think uh, What If is going to hold its release date. It's an What If, if you're not familiar, is an animated show. Uh, f- kind of, it kind of takes place within the MCU, but it's also uh, its own animated, uh, like alternate reality. Like, what if uh, Black Panther turned out to be Captain America, in, or what? What if T'Challa ended up being Black Panther instead of Cap? You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> what if T'Challa was Captain America and not Black Panther? That It sets up that kind of premise. I have a feeling what if is going to be pushed back. It may still be in 2021. I don't think it's going to stay early 2021, though. Uh, Morbius is not uh, in the MCU, but I have a pretty strong idea that that is going to keep its release date. Shang-Chi for May 7th. Uh, I know that production on Shang-Chi has been halted uh, for a little while. Um, I don't know if they're back to filming just yet. Uh, if they're not filming yet, I'm confident this will not hold its May 7th release date. Uh, we I, we know that they have been filming. Uh, we know that they had to take a break from filming. I, it's my personal opinion. May 7th is a little early uh, for this particular MCU film to come out. I don't think it's going to hit its May 7th release date. Uh, Venom 2 in June 25th, I feel confident about that. Again, it's not an MCU film. 
Okay, here we go. Hawkeye, Ms. Marvel, She-Hulk, and Moon Knight. I know there has been pre-production on all of these television shows with all of the other delays, with all of the other um, projects that Marvel, specifically in the MCU, have going on. I don't think they're going to keep any of these release dates. I, I, I just, I don't see it happening. Best case scenario, in my non-professional opinion, they're all going to get pushed back to 2022. That's just, that's, those are my thoughts. Um, Spider-Man 3, Home Sweet Home slash Homesick, whatever it is that we're calling it. Um, I do very much think that they are going to keep this December 17th release date. Um, I don't believe cameras have started rolling yet. I know that they are going to start rolling soon. Tom Holland just uh, got pulled from, not pulled, but uh, I know he went from, uh, oh, Oh, Uncharted. I think he was filming Uncharted. Um, and now I think he's uh, doing pre-production on Spider-Man 3. Whatever the, the name of that film is going to be. The interesting thing about the Spider-Man 3 untitled film is that it's also going to be battling Black Adam in theaters for their particular release. Uh, they moved. Um, if you remember, it was a couple of months ago... Um, Marvel and Disney actually moved the release date from Spider-Man 3. I think it was supposed to be a summer release. They pushed it back to a December release where Black Adam currently is. Uh, and now I think they're doing that as kind of a power play. I think Black Adam, which comes out just five days later on December 22nd, Black Adam coming out on December 22nd. I think this is uh, going to be a bit of a competitive weekend. Um, I think... Black Adam will move. Because how does Black Adam compare against Spider-Man? There's no compare. Nobody's heard of Black Adam. Everybody knows who Spider-Man is. Everybody's going to go out and see the new Spider-Man movie. Um, I, think, I think Black Adam will move. And I think Spider-Man will keep this December 17th release date. Um, Ryan, this is a lot of information. <laughs> this is a lot of information. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with these particular release dates with all of the pandemic stuff happening, um, with everything going on with Marvel and all their TV shows. There's so much, uh, so much to process. Do you think... Because if they, if they keep everything the way that it is... Hold on, let me go back through here. Um, uh, we have... Spider-Man, uh, we have uh, Hawkeye, Ms. Marvel, She-Hulk, Moon Knight. Um, I'm not going to include the Sony-verse. Uh, I'm not going to include uh, Venom 2, but I will include Shang-Chi, so now we're up to six. I'm not going to include Morbius. Uh, I'm not going to include the What If animated series, but I will include Loki. Um, that's seven, and then the Eternals, that's Eight. You know, if we included the What If series, that is nine MC, just MCU projects. That is nine MCU projects uh, coming out. I don't think they're going to do nine, but there's eight if none of them move. Do you think that's sustainable? Uh, no. Um, uh, but, uh, again, I, I don't really know what I'm talking about, but my, my gut feeling is no. I don't, I don't think it's sustainable. Um like, I, I think we also, you know, I keep bringing up the pandemic, but that's because I've been stuck at home for so long. We all are. I, you know, it's, all are. Um, uh, it's uh, I think it depends on how things shake out. I think it depends on when the vaccine becomes available. Yeah. I think it's, you know, all this stuff. So I think, you know, um, I did m my one personal comment that I wanted to say about this was um, I actually have not heard of Shang-Chi before. Oh, OK. But I'm but I'm looking at it, you know, and I'm somewhat familiar with Marvel comics and um, but I'm looking at it here and uh, the thing that's sort of exciting to me about it is I am currently watching um, Kim's Convenience and Simu Liu is, is like one of the stars of Kim's Convenience and he's yeah. going to be Shang-Chi so, yeah. so that was like oh cool <laughs> so, that, so um, and that'll be very interesting to see what he does there because he's a, he's a fun comedic actor. He kind of, he's a really good looking dude. And so they sort of make fun a lot of that in Kim's convenience. And, um, uh, it'll be neat to see him awesome. as a superior. That's yeah. Awesome. So that, that was, but, but as far as the whole schedule goes, um, 
yeah, I think it's probably going to get stretched out more. I mean, that's just a gut feeling, but um, it just seems like, I mean, the MCU has been cranking so hard for so long, but, you know, you mentioned that production on some of their major things has been shut down. So, um, you know, I, I, I think it remains to be seen. I just don't see it. Um, I, like I said, uh, there are nine just MCU projects. If you want to include this, the Sony-verse, uh, Sony's Spider-verse, uh, that makes 11 projects all slated to come out next year. I Like I said, I don't see Hawkeye coming out next year. I don't see She-Hulk. I don't see Moon Knight. Uh, what was the other one that I left out? Uh, Ms. Marvel. I don't see those four shows coming out. What if I don't see that show coming out next year? Um Marvel, uh, the MCU, Disney, they really have to focus on their big properties right now. The Eternals. That I think the Eternals is... I don't know if they wanted to replace Avengers, but I know that's going to be one of their huge tentpole properties. They're investing so much time and money and marketing and energy and brain power into creating the Eternals. And here's the thing. Nobody knows who the Eternals are. I mean, I get it. Nobody knew who the Guardians of the Galaxy were before they came out. But even more so, this is even more bananas of a property. Like, the Eternals? Mm-hmm. What? I Yeah, so so they're putting so much stock and so much energy. Same thing with Shang-Chi. Um, they're putting so much thought and so much energy into creating brand new properties with, um, uh, dare I say it, non-white folk. Um, because we need that. We need more diversity. Uh, we need to be represented or representative of the world that we live in. And if like we've had 20, let's see, 20, 23, uh, Captain Marvel, uh, Black Panther, uh, were the only two diverse titles, I think of the infinity saga so we have 21 movies 21 movies Mm -hmm. in the mcu starring straight white men (laughs) cool i mean okay great what else you got you know it's time for something new it's time for something different and we're still gonna get those you know straight white dude movies um but let's let's start yeah i don't think those are going away (laughs) those aren't going away but let's start Search in some other corners. Like, cool. What else you got? Show me something new. Um, I don't see all these films coming out next year. Um, it just it just seems too packed of a schedule. If it does, greatest year in Marvel MCU <laughs> history. There's no other way to say it. I just don't see that happening. Ryan? Me neither. I'm with you. I, it, it, I, I don't see it happening. Things have been... Yeah. I... I, th- I hate to make this prediction, but I think we're going to have a hard winter with this pandemic. And I think things are, I, I, this is a terrible thing to say on this happy, sweet show, but I, I think things are going to get a little worse. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So you're in, a, you're in New York, yep. you know that. Oh, yes. So, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, we could belabor this point a little bit more. Uh, we only have four people watching the show at this point. Uh, so what do you, for our four viewers, what do you think? Uh, do you think that Marvel or the MCU and Disney, do you think they're going to double down on these nine properties, uh, teaming up with Sony 11 properties to get 11 new uh, shows in the MCU by the, by the end of next year? Or do you think that that seems a little ambitious? Pardon me. And they're uh, going to push things back to 2022, 2023. Jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. All right, guys. We have one. This is the last segment of the day. We're going to take your live questions. Ryan, how are you doing on time over there, buddy? I believe that I should depart, sir. All right. Um, uh, it's been really great, but I can hear my uh, my two-year-old having his uh, afternoon meltdown. So Sounds I'm going to go. We'll let, we'll <laughs> let go. you go. Thanks, man. Thank you I appreciate so it. much for joining us, Ryan. Uh, you, before buddy. you go, where can people find you online? Uh, let's see. Um, uh, uh, Ryan H42 on Twitter, which I don't use a whole lot. I'm on Facebook. And um, uh, something I would like to plug is my band, um, uh, uh, Fragile Rock, yes. which we had an NPR Tiny Desk concert. It's a comedy band with puppets. Um, uh, so check Fragile Rock. So check that out. Perfect. Yeah, I didn't even know if you knew about that, sir. Yeah, I didn't know about that. <laughs> like, where can people go online to find Fragile Rock? Uh, go to look, look Fragile Rock um, up on the YouTube on NPR Tiny Desk Concerts. If you look up Fra- not not Fraggle Rock, but Fragile, fragile 
Rock? I don't even know what Fraggle Rock is. I've never heard of it before. <laughs> <laughs> Fragile Rock uh, on NPR Tiny Desk Concerts, and you can see my very, very goofy band playing. That's awesome. So, Ryan, thank you yeah. so much for joining us. Thank you, Ryan. Everyone go out, uh, check you. out Fragile Rock on the YouTubes, and uh, we're going to go on and take your live questions now. Alive. <laughs> it's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's time to take your live questions. Here we go. Oh, I already have this pulled up, and I'm rip-roaring and ready to go. Uh, John Vogel says, I have to see 2001 in a theater, uh, I guess. I hated it, but then again, I was watching it on a crappy old classroom TV. Yes, exactly. That was my same experience. I, you know, I didn't watch it on like a uh, on a television from the 1990s. Uh, I was watching it on like like a like a home big screen TV kind of a thing. But even still, like it's. It's too small of a screen for a spectacle like that. You need to go see it in the theaters. It is an immersive um, experience um, that you're you're only going to get that in the theater. So anytime that they do a reshowing of 2001: Space Odyssey in, Odyssey in a movie theater, go do that because I hated the film. I wanted nothing to do with it. I got dragged along to go see it in IMAX, and I loved it. It is a completely different experience when you see it in the theater. Uh, Kay Hartman says, Ugh, so gutted. Uh, Ryan Coogler's statement was so touching and lovely. Yeah, regarding um, T'Challa, Chadwick Boseman, the Black Panther. Um, it, it came so unexpectedly. Nobody saw this coming. And it hurts. This one hurts, you guys. Um, but he was such a lovely human being. Like I said before, he used his celebrity for good. He was a real-life superhero. Kay goes on to say, Jonah Hill. There was a point earlier in the show when I couldn't remember Jonah Hill's name. And she chimed. Thank you so much for that. Um, uh, Karen Brown, 70s. Yes, uh, uh, the Wonder Woman series with Linda Carter. Carter Again, I was uh, referencing uh, the show. I couldn't remember if it was in the 70s or in the 80s. Thank you so much for, uh, for that, Karen. Uh, who is uh, one of my cousins. Hi, Karen. How's it going? Uh, Izzy Christensen says, uh, I personally only think piracy is okay if you absolutely, like in all caps, if you absolutely don't have enough money to rent something on demand. Uh, but if you do, then you should. Um, yeah, I, I mean, like, I, I think everybody should uh, rent. Uh, if you absolutely, it, it begs the question, if you absolutely don't have the money to do so, um, do you absolutely need to see the film? Um, I can't answer that for anyone else. I can't. Um, that's a moral question that you need to figure out for, for yourself. If you are in the position that you, yes, you absolutely need to see this movie. And the only way that you can see it is through torrent or downloads or, you know, piracy, stuff like that. Then, you know, that's a question that you need to answer on your own. My answer I, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't see a reason. I don't see a reason for it personally, but again, I can't make these decisions up for anyone else. Um, I, I see it a little bit differently as an artist coming from my point of view. I want to get paid for my work. I'm willing to pay someone else for their, their work, even if it means that I have to wait a while to do so. That's just me. Uh, next comment comes from my cousin Karen Brown. She says, I did not love the casting of the original miniseries. Um, which miniseries? Uh, specifically, Molly Ringwald and Laura San Giacomo uh, fell short for me. And on piracy, it's black and white to me. Stealing isn't okay. Sure, I'd steal a loaf of bread to feel my starving child. But stealing entertainment? Nope. Um... Are we still talking about Wonder Woman, the the original series in the beginning? Uh, oh, sorry, as you previously mentioned, I did not love the casting of the original miniseries, specifically Mo let's see. Molly Ringwald, Laura San Giacomo. Hold on, uh, bear with me, guys. I'm gonna look this up on IMDb really quick, just so I can uh, clarify what it is uh, you're referring to. Uh, Laura San Giacomo, uh, let's see, Sex Lies Videotape, Quigley Down Under, Just Shoot Me, do 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 Nickelodeon, uh, hold on, sorry, uh, just, I'm scrolling through her, um, 
uh, her IMDB to see what it coordinates with um, in terms of anything of what we may have been to. Oh, the stand! That's where you're referring to is uh, the original stand. Uh, the 1994 miniseries, uh, yes, also starring, starring Molly Ringwald, Gary Sinise. Yes, sorry, took me a second. Thanks, IMDb. You're a lifesaver. Um, yeah, so Karen, you said that you weren't in love with the original casting of the miniseries of The Stand, uh, specifically the Molly Ringwald character and Laura San Giacomo character. Um, I haven't seen it. Um, I just remember seeing little bits and pieces, little snippets here and there, and the production value of that show just did not seem great in my opinion uh but yes i wholeheartedly agree with you in uh in terms of piracy for entertainment's sake um stealing a loaf of bread to feed feed your child that's a completely different argument stealing a movie for entertainment's sake i i like do any of us need to watch tv we don't need it to survive and i think there's a very different um um uh, discussion to be have, had about that uh ryan who was on the show ryan michael hill says uh i think i agree with you karen thanks for the check um yeah uh that's he's uh ryan is much better than i for replying in the moment uh karen says and yet you binged it all laughy face laughy face laughy face um uh, i'm guessing you're referring to cobra kai it's silly it's so silly but i'm i'm enjoying it yes I will binge it all day long. Yes, please. Robbie Spratt says, since you brought up Lost, I think this is in reference to Lovecraft Country. Uh, since you brought up Lost, do you do either of you have thoughts or feelings about Twin Peaks? I never watched Twin Peaks. Um, uh, my, my old roommate's boyfriend is huge into Twin Peaks. He loves Twin Peaks. Um, probably, I dare, dare I say the biggest Twin Peaks fan I've ever known. Um, I, I, I've been, I wanted to watch it. I've just never gotten around to it. Um, I've heard great things. I've heard, I've heard weird things about it. Um, I would love, uh, to go back and watch Twin Peaks, but Robbie, what are your thoughts about it? Um, yeah, let me know. I'd be, I'd be very interested in that. Karen Brown says, loved the Adam West TV series, uh, referring to Batman, watched it. Uh, watch it with my brothers every day in the 70s. Campy, ridiculous fun. I liked the Penguin best with the, uh, of the villains, but every episode was fun. Uh, yeah, that's how I'm feeling. Like, every episode is just so silly and it's so cheesy. Um, I just finished uh, a double episode arc with... Um, uh, I can't remember the name. George. Oh, I can't think of his last name. Uh, he played Mr. Freeze. It's so campy. It's so silly. And I love watching them like throw the batarang up to the top of the building and they're climbing the rope up the building, but they turn the camera on its side and the actors are just walking like this on the ground. But with the camera on its side, it looks like they're scaling a building. And that's not how gravity works, but I love it. It's so... It's so imaginative, and for what it was, it's so silly, and it's just fun, and I loved it. I completely loved it. So, yes, um, the Adam West Batman series, I'm loving it, and um, I want to watch it with everybody. That'd be great. Uh, Karen says, need to go. Excellent show, Mike and Ryan. Thanks. Thank you. It's uh, serendipitous that that was our last comment because uh, she has to go, and so do we. Karen, thank you for watching. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank you for commenting in the, se in the, in the comment section. Thank you for being part of the discussion. Thanks for staying with us and just, you know, like I said, being a part of the, of the conversation. Um, that will do it for this installment of Gotta Love Them Movies. Uh, you guys, if you like this video, click like. If you really like this video, click subscribe. And if you really, really like this video, click share. Because that is what Adam West's Batman would want you to do. All right, guys, uh, this is the end of the show. Uh, this is where I tell you all to speak kind words to each other. Be nice to each other. We all live in a weird, crazy world uh, where everybody has differing thoughts and opinions. So any opportunity that we get to uh, uh, make connections with other people, if there's somebody that you haven't spoken to for a while, give them a call. See what they're up to. Just check in with each other and let's, let's like I said, speak kind words to each other. All right, guys, uh, that will do it for me. I'm Mike Brown. And until next time... Toodles!